Step into Gwynedd, home of stunning landscapes, inspirational heritage, and the most powerful rulers in medieval Wales. A land flanked by swathes of coastline, rising to grassy pastures, soaring mountains, and dramatic ice-carved valleys. This is the story of the Princes of Gwynedd, whose words and deeds shaped the landscape and culture of the Wales we see today. The Princes of Gwynedd emerged from instability at the end of the Roman occupation of Britain. They became the most powerful of all the Welsh princes, dominating most of Wales and defying both Saxon and Norman invaders. Stand here at Diganwy, ancient seat of the rulers of Gwynedd, and imagine trading ships sailing west to Ireland, to the home of Griffith ap Cynan, who crossed the sea to reclaim his grandfather's lands. From his base on Anglesey, Griffith drove the Normans out of Gwynedd. A new culture began to take shape. Pa beth hefyd, ech tywynygu a wnau wynedd yna o eglwysau calchaid fel y ffyrfafen o'r sir. Griffith's son, Owain, built on his father's success, using the turmoil in England to extend his kingdom. His deeds were celebrated by his bards, the official poets of the princes. By the time Owain was buried here alongside his father, he had laid the foundations of a mighty kingdom. Following Owain's rule, Gwynedd's transformation from ancient kingdom to medieval state was continued by two of his descendants. Llewellyn the Great ruled for over 40 years. His probable birthplace, Tommen Castell, sits across from Dolwydelan Castle, part of a ring of defensive strongholds. People farmed the land and maintained Llewellyn's prized cattle, which grazed on these summer pastures or frithoedd. They paid tax to the princes in the form of labour, goods and services. Villagers at the Maer Drevi, the villages around Llewellyn's palaces, were bound to the land, serving the prince at his roaming courts. Reflect here at the remains of one such llys. Llewellyn also established new religious foundations, both churches and monasteries that can still be explored today. Step into Cymer Abbey, where monks returned his favour by breeding his finest horses. Walk at the remains of Aberconway Abbey, whose monks erected the stone of Carreg Llewellyn to confirm his generous gift of land. Near his llys at Trevriw in the Conwy Valley, legend tells that Llewellyn built a church for his wife Joan, or Siwan, who found this ancient church at Llanrychwyn to be too remote. Joan was the daughter of King John of England. Her marriage to Llewellyn was a strategic act of diplomacy. At the turn of the 13th century, Llewellyn's position as prince was undisputed but relations with England soured, and soon King John invaded, pushing Llewellyn's territory back west of the River Conway and taking control of his favourite place here at Abergwyngregin. Through the efforts of Joan, Llewellyn and King John made peace, and Gwynedd flourished once more. Llewellyn forged links with France and Rome through the monks. These were important in bolstering the prince's independence from their powerful English neighbour. Having passed the reins to his son David, the great prince died peacefully in Aberconwy, the abbey he endowed and where he spent his last years. Llewellyn's coffin now lies here in San Roost. Following Llewellyn's death, Gwynedd entered an era of turmoil and division out of which emerged another powerful leader, 
the grandson of Llewellyn the Great, he became known as Llewellyn the Last. Here at Dolbadan Castle, he imprisoned his own brother for 20 years under the shadow of Snowdon. Eventually, King Henry III of England recognised Llewellyn and proclaimed him the Prince of all Wales. Upon the King's death, his son Edward I took the crown. But Llewellyn did not attend his coronation, an insult that set the stage for a bloody and fatal confrontation. Edward pushed deep into Wales with military force that Llewellyn simply could not match. The prince was forced to submit, losing most of his kingdom. Llewellyn was killed in mid-Wales while rallying his troops. Oleas Gwanas Gwanar i'r llaw O laeth Llywelyn Cof dyn i'r dal Edward began a new wave of castle building using the ruins of De Ganwy as building blocks for Conwy Castle across the river mouth. But Edward and his successors still met with resistance as new Welsh visionaries took up the fight. Scorch marks from the rebellion of Owen Glyndwr in the 14th century can be seen to this day. The princes epitomises Welsh pride, identity and innovation and sowed the seeds for the Wales we know today. The remains of their castles and courts, together with the music and poetry they inspired, are ingrained in Welsh culture. Step out into Gwynedd and walk in the footsteps of the princes. <laughs>